Hi guys, today we're going to learn how to paint um, some outer space scenes and today I'm going to demonstrate doing a galaxy and a nebula and I don't know a whole lot about those things, you've probably studied them but here's some um, pictures that I've painted lately to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. And I bet you yours are going to be even better. Now, I've, I have on my iPad some pictures that I'm going to look at, and I asked you each to bring one that you like to do. Um, but I'll, I'll first tell you what we have to work with. Each of you has a board and a piece of nice watercolor paper. Tape, and we're going to tape it down. We've got a toothbrush to splatter with, a flat, bigger brush, and a round, smaller brush. You got a palette full of paints, some clean water, some um, liquid in a little med cup that we're going to use to make to keep the paper white for star spots, and um, a toothpick we can use for that too. I'm going to um, just tell you a, a few things that are important little lessons, and I'll talk about them as we go along too. But I wanted you to know that you have to have clean hands to start with. You don't want any grease or dirt on your hands. And when we use watercolor, the, the amount of color and the saturation, the density of the color tone, will be determined by how much water we add to the paint. Um, so what we do is we start with, a light, with the lightest colors, and we're going to keep building with layers until it's dark like the dark night sky. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the colors and, and the color wheel. You may have been familiar with this before. You can see that they're arranged in a real particular order and when you look at them, like you're familiar with red and green for Christmas colors, those are opposite on the color wheel and or here we go, red and green. And those um, are primary colors and this, another one would be the um, yellow and purple. Am I right about that? I'm not sure. <laughs> but whatever is exactly opposite each other, if you mix those two colors together, you know what you're going to get? Either gray or brown. So we want to be careful as we're letting colors mix on our paper that if we didn't really want it to be brown, which is kind of yucky, um, for a watercolor sky painting, we need to stay with colors that are near each other on the color wheel um, when we're painting and it's all mi mixing together. So I've set up your palette so that it matches the color wheel. So you've got, um, you know, white and black down here. And then we start with purple, blue, green, yellows, orange, reds, pink. So you can just, um, we'll have the color wheel available for you to look at so you'll know how that's going to work out. Okay. Um, sometimes we're going to have to, you know, we'll have to decide what, how we want people to look at our painting. And a really important thing to think about is when you're doing a watercolor or any kind of artwork, that maybe the focus, the central place where you want people to look, we don't really want it to be exactly in the middle. Now, I've, I've maybe not done so well with some of these, but that is one principle of art that you might want to keep in mind that as you, the, the viewer looks at your art, your eye should kind of travel around and maybe not land right in the middle. Um, it makes it more interesting. Another thing that's really important is to have contrast. You want really light areas and really dark areas in your same painting. Um, Okay. All right. So let's start. First thing we're going to do is we're going to eat. You're going to get to do two paintings, one on the top and one on the bottom on, of your paper. And we're going to mask it off with keep the paper down flat. So take masking tape and have it be partially on your, pa on your um, watercolor paper and then tape it down. And I'm going to do the top and the bottom the same way with about a quarter of an inch border that's taped 
you know, so that the paint will not go there. And then you do the sides. Make sure it's stuck down good. And then we'll do one more strip right across the middle. Let's try to get it on there straight about halfway. Okay, so good. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna move my paintings out of the way so they don't get splattered in my iPad. <laughs> because what, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is take this um, liquid um, color blocking solution. It's kind of like a mixture of white Elmer's glue and um, like another kind of glue. And take your toothbrush, you each brought a toothbrush from home, and just dip the tip of it in there and then get over your paper and use your thumb and let it flick on there. Now it's a little hard to see, but I'm making little spots. We don't really want huge globs, but we'll get a few and that's okay. And you can do both your papers. And those places where we put this stuff now are going to become stars at the end. This will block the paint from going in those spots. Now you're going to have to take a little break and go wash your hands. And um, I don't know, these are old toothbrushes, so you can probably just throw it away. I'm going to go do that now. So I'm going to show you the two um, outer space scenes that I plan to try to do for your demonstration. This is a nebula. Lots of pretty colors, all black around the edges, but you can see how there's light in there. So that's one. Let's see. And I'd also like to try to do this one. And this is a galaxy. Um, I don't remember which one it is. I think I, there was a specific name for that. Maybe you'll know. But I think that's pretty cool. So we'll try. I'll try to do those two. Um, so I'm going to set that here. And I have to let this um, dry. And it doesn't take too long. That big spot there will take too long. I'm going to see if I can pick that up. This stuff peels off like Elmer's glue does once it's dry. Um, if you get it on your fingers. Let's see if I get that out of there. Once it's dry, I could just peel it off. But that's going to take a long time to dry, such a big spot. And I'm going to take my hair dryer and just dry this stuff a minute so we can get going. All right, those little spots are dry now, and I was able to just kind of pick that, peel that one off. So the next thing we're going to, I'm going to have you do is take um, your bigger brush and get it wet, and then we're going to go into light colors that we want. And I think I'll start working on the top one. Or no, maybe I'll do the bottom one first, then I'll flip, I can flip it over to work on the other one. So we're going to work on this one, and it's going to be this nebula. And I'll, I'm going to take some yellow. And now these, these paints are um, right out of the tube, so they need, haven't been um, watered down at all. So you need to add a little water with your brush. And then you can take it, and I don't really want to be right in the middle with my brightest color. Use a little extra water. I want to use quite a bit of water and just kind of squish the colors around. We'll put some yellow there. We'll do some yellow down around here. Lots of water. And then rinse your brush in between colors. And then I'm going to go to some orange. Ooh, I got lots of orange pigment on there. More water. Kind of smoosh it around. You can dab dab your um, brush on the water on the paper towel to see if you got the paint out of it before you go to the next color. Uh, I think I'll get some pink. 
kind of mix it around make sure you get some water into it and I'm gonna have some pink over in this corner just um, move your brush all different directions I'm gonna leave some area right up in here white I'm not really painting over each color I'm just trying to let as I get more paint and more water on there, it's going to start to blend together. Purple is down here at the, can you see when I do that? <laughs> Probably not too well. I'm going to get that mixed up a little bit. Add some purple up here in the corner. And, you know, mix it in a little bit. And have some now, if I get my purple mixed with my orange, you see what happens? It kind of goes brownish, which maybe isn't so bad. It's not what I really want all over. I need to use something next to the orange that's analogous to it on the same side of the color wheel, like red or blue. Let's go with some blue next to that. The blue is next to the purple here in the color wheel you get some water you can tell what it is it's a very beautiful blue I really put a lot of orange on there I don't know if that was a good idea but really there's no rules for this you get to decide what you want to do like lots of blue. you can use as many colors as you want it's really up to you just fun. Let's see. <laughs> We're going to have some darker colors as we go along. We'll do some darker red here. I don't want to have a real regular shape in the middle. It's kind of an irregular shape. Okay. That's looking pretty good. If I want to blend anything together a little bit, I can just want, rinse my brush out, dab it off a little bit, and then like, I can just add some water to some of those areas and they'll kind of squish, make, mix together a little better. The more water I have on there, and I could probably just take some of my clean water and drop it on a little bit too, and that will help those colors blend and if and where the water drops go it might spread it out a little bit too which is nice just play around with it and then we're going to let that one dry that's looking pretty good for that's the first layer all right now i'm going to turn this around we're going to let that one dry and work on the other one that i'm going to work on which is a galaxy can you see that one Dick? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see that's more of a swirl. The colors are um, closer together. It's just black, which we'll add way at the end, blue, some purple, some pink. Okay. And I'll have to use my other pot of water. Side. All right. So this time, all the um, colors that I'm going to add, I need to do in kind of an oval oval shape. All right, so remember we start with the lightest colors. So let's do a little, remembering we're going to leave some pink, we're going to leave some white right in the middle of that oval. Oops, I got some water all over the place here. Okay, kind of get our basic shape here. Leave some white in the middle. We can fill that in later, but we it's hard to take paint off, so we're going to leave some there. And then I want to go, hmm, I think it looks like it goes to some sort of purple. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit of this dark red, though, first. You can do whatever you want. See how that'll blend in, because that paint, we're working kind of fast, so the Paint blends together. Let's 
some of that off. I'm going to go into some purple. This doesn't need to be real dark yet. We're going to keep adding layers. Hmm, I'm going to add some nice blue. doesn't matter if you um, paint over the tape. We're just going to peel that off later. Paint to the edges. I do have some black, but we're going to add that later. First, we want to get just some really nice um, depth of color everywhere. All right, nice. I think I'll take my smaller brush now and kind of blend. See if I can get this brush going. Blend that pink a little bit. If I take my clean brush with clean water, just dab it off a little bit, then I can kind of work on that edge, the paint edge, and, and uh, get it a little smoother. and blend those colors together. Ooh, that's cool. All right. All right. Okay. I think at this point we need to let them dry. So I'm going, because I want to speed this up, I'm going to use the hair dryer again. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you on this one, um, See, I've got some really dark areas of paint. If I want to add more whiteness to this, while that's still wet, I can, I can dab some of it up. And that will make an interesting pattern, too. Just give um, light to some of the areas, which is kind of nice. That blends it in a little bit, too. You can just do that if you feel like it with either a paper towel or a Kleenex. Okay, I'm going to do some drying. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you that at this point we want everything dry, and mine's dry. Um, and yours doesn't need to look anything like mine. You know, you, you are able to can do the colors that you want and the pattern that you want, okay? These are just samples. But the next phase is that we're going to add more vibrant color. See how, as this dried, it's not as bright as it used to be. The reds get more dull. Um, and so what we're going to do is add more color. So I think I'll go ahead and use my big brush. I did get clean water, as you can tell. That helps. And let's see. We'll, I'll start working up here first. Let's add... A little bit more to this red. Some of that area got very brownish as it mixed together. I don't know if I like that. It's really totally up to you. Maybe you like brown in the arse. Cover up some of that orange. I got a little bit too much orange, I think. And once it's dry, I can go over it. Okay, now I'm going to add another. Oh, I didn't use any green anywhere. Hmm, that's interesting. But you don't have to use every color. We'll try a little green. Oop, I've got red on my brush. That's not good. I'm gonna, I'll use the other brush so I can get some nice dark green here. Let's see what some green does. Cool. 
tree in a few places. All right, I'd like um, in that center of the nebula it to be a little brighter, and I've got some paint here next to the yellow, which is called gambosh hue, and it's a little brighter than yellow. Let's see what that does. I like to drop some of that in and then blend it in. What's that? Kind of make that a little regular. It's a little gold, a little goldish. If you get too much, more than you want, you can kind of wet it down and then blot it up with your Kleenex. See how that brightened that back up? If I want this spot to be a little brighter, I get it wet and blot some of it up. Let's see, anywhere else I want to do that? Maybe up here a little bit. I'm scrub at it a little bit and then blot it. So we want some areas that are light and bright. Okay, I think I need a little more red there. This is kind of fiery in the middle. Maybe a star is fizzling out or being born. Okay, I'm going to take some of my darker colors and just make it do another layer. So the purple. Some of that in there. Let's see up here in this corner. If we make the colors, the the really deep colors that we're using very um, concentrated, it becomes like black. And then when we do add black on top, it will make it a really kind of a really beautiful dark black rather than just a flat color of black. Now I'm going to add a little bit more purple over here. See how we're getting kind of a layered effect? When you have the darker colors that looks deeper into space. And we can blend that in together. Okay, we're going to let that one dry and we'll work on this one a little bit. Before I do that, I, I might want to blend some of this. It's kind of like I got really strong lines there. I'm not sure I want those really strong lines, so I'm going to rinse my brush off dab it on my paper towel, and then go where those really strong lines are and try to blend them in a little bit. Let's make it a little smoother and softer or more erratic. Okay. I would like a little yellow in the middle. I still I kind of washed it all out. brightness. Okay, I'm going to move back down here now. Now this one needs to be a lot darker on the outside. I need to make more vibrant color around the middle. I'm about out of paint. So if you run out of paint and you would like some more, just let us know. We can come around with the paint. Um, I'm using my smaller brush now so that I can be a little bit more specific about what I'm doing these colors. You can use the bigger brush if you'd rather. Let's see. Don't have much purple left either. A little bit in there.
a little easier to go around the oval with that big brush, I think. But I like how this one works also. Just trying to get more vibrant color in there. Well, let's see. I'll take a little bit of that gold. Like kind of a spiral in the middle. It looks good. Now, I'm, I think I'll go ahead and start on some black, so that's what's right here. So if I, I need to get it watered down a little bit. I think I'll go to the other brush. I can spread more quickly and we really shouldn't leave our brushes hanging out in the water bucket I'm gonna leave some blue remember to go in the circle oval shaped this one a little bit kind of. hmm what I want to do is blend that a little bit that's not such a sharp line That's looking pretty good. All right. Um, I'm going to dry this one because I want to add a little bit more. I want to add some black in there in the corners and the edges. Um, so we're going to take another break for drying. All right. I'm going to take my big brush and the black. I would like to just bring this um, dark area in a little bit and just use squiggly lines we're not going real straight lines on this one it's it's not a galaxy it's a nebula so it's a very um, irregular and cloud like like I could use more black. <laughs> but that's about all we've got. Okay, I'm going to use a little water and I could spread that black around a little better. Maybe I can bring some over here since I wet it down. I don't want to go clear to the edge of my bright spots, but um, near them. And because then if we, we go from light to dark more gradually, it's um, looks like we're going into a deep hole, doesn't it? That's what the idea is. Okay. And then I can take my other brush and kind of work on those edges a little bit if I want to.
push the paint around so it goes where you want it. And this is just your idea about how it's supposed to look. Nobody gets to tell you. So yours doesn't need to look like mine or your neighbor's. It's just what you want. And you think it might look like out there. Okay, I think I'm about done. Um, and so it, these have to both be totally dry and then we'll take off the um, little spots so we can see the stars. And then we'll decide if we want to add more white paint for stars. We can do that. Okay, so we're going to take another break. Okay, well I was thinking that maybe some of these little lines are a little too distinct, so I'm just going to soften a little bit of them by taking my damp brush and pushing that around a little bit. And then my Kleenex and dabbing that. I don't want them all gone, but just a little bit. Okay, that's better. You don't have to do anything like that if you don't want to. Uh, I've got another little spot over here. I might try to blend out a little bit. Okay. All right. Since that page is drying, that painting's drying a little bit, we'll go down here. And now, this one's totally dry, and you can see the spots. And when I rub them with my finger, it takes off that... Um, material that we put on there. It's this. It's a masking fluid. And as I rub it, you see the stars start to appear. Isn't that cool? I think this is a really fun part of the whole process. Those little nibs that we've been painting over the whole time rub right off. Just keep um, kind of rubbing at it until you don't feel any bumps. And then after I get that one rubbed off, we'll decide if there's any places where we'd like to add like a shooting star or um, little rays coming off of anything. We can add that with some white paint. Now we're going to do the magic on this one. Because I think it's, if it's not totally dry, then it doesn't work so well. Here we go. If you start see it, seeing um, that your white spots are getting paint on them, that means you're rubbing on wet paint. So we gotta wait till it dries a little bit more. We got a pretty good um, star field here, I think. Isn't that fun? neat. All right, I, if I decide I want to have any more stars, I, I gave each a toothpick and can add a little water, clean water, to the white paint there and stir it together a little bit, thin it out a little. And then I can take this and, you know, Maybe make a shooting star, give it a tail. Maybe over here I'll maybe make a bigger star that has some rays coming off. You know, you you don't have to do any of this, but if, if you didn't end up with enough stars and you want some more, you could use either end of the toothpick. And you can just dot in some more in some areas where you don't have them. If I want to make them bigger, whoops, I can do this side. Get some bigger stars. It works really well. Just make them random so they're not lined up or something. And just have fun. It's your painting. 
we're done. Well, now we're not quite done, are we? We've got to take the tape off, and then it's going to look really cool. So just go to the end of your masking tape and just rip it off slowly, kind of at an angle, to try to keep your paper from getting ripped. Oh, looks like I did that one last. Get that one off. Don't rip real fast, we don't want the paper to come apart. Oh, I can't reach that one. Oh, I think it's looking good.